No, baby, that's for somebody else. We're just gonna keep you right where you're at right now. It doesn't matter what you think. The Wrestling Realm presents Break It Down with Brian H. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of Break It Down with Brian H. I'm your host, Brian H. Waters. Now, this show, of course, is brought to you by the Wrestling Realm. Make sure you are subscribed to the podcast by Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you name it, I'm there. So, we're getting ready for episode 100. As I get set, you know, um, I'm really excited. Definitely excited about this. Uh, as I'm put on the social media networks, I'm going to break down the decade. So what does that mean? I'm going to talk about the top wrestler of the decade. Who was the number one wrestler? Some say it was Daniel Bryan. Some say it was Kofi Kingston. Some say it was AJ Styles. You know, some people even say it was CM Punk because people are still chanting his names, right? Then I'm going to talk about the most shocking moment. What was that moment? that had you pick up the phone and call somebody? Was it when Mark Henry faked his retirement? Or perhaps when CM Punk dropped the pipe bomb? You know, there's a lot of moments out there. But today's episode, I'm going to start off. WWE is taking over the podcast game. Now, you know, clearly you can see I do a podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, Shout out to all my friends out there. You know what? Shout out to my good friend, Leo. Leo Brady, man. Leo doesn't even watch wrestling, but he's a good friend, so he supports the podcast. And I said, man, you know, we was together today, and I said, you know, hanging out, and I said, look, all right, man, I'm about to go watch wrestling, and then I'm going to film my podcast. He said, I'm going to watch it. Those are the type of friends you need in your circle. So shout out to him. But... I'm sitting there and I'm looking, I'm like, man, WWE, you know, we knew we had Corey Graves podcast coming. I was like, man, you know what? That's pretty cool. Graves doing his thing. You know, I listened to it after the bell. I like his perspective. Now I'll be one of the first to admit Corey Graves annoyed me on the microphone when it came to his commentary. I thought he just did a little too much, but after a while it grew on me, you know, and I understand he's trying to be like today's Bobby Heenan. Or even Jerry Law. And I would give him more Bobby Heenan because Jerry was fine. But Jerry, let's be real, y'all. Jerry was a sleaze. Jerry wanted to talk about, all he wanted to do was talk about the puppies and stuff. And it was cool, but that's all he did. So, you know. But Corey Graves doesn't do that. You know, he just loves Mandy Rose on TV. And off TV, he loves Carmella. But he had the New Day on his show this past week. And I thought it was really cool. He talked with them about their podcast, obviously, that's coming up, which I urge you to check out, uh, called The New Day. Or is it called? A New Day Podcast. It's A New Day or something like that. But um, they discussed the names. But, you know, he talked. One of the things that I really enjoyed, because I ain't going to recap their podcast, but one of the things I really enjoyed, one of the conversations I enjoyed was the fact that they, Woods, E, and Kofi Kingston discussed being black wrestlers. And while they were accusing, some of you out there were accusing them of shucking and jiving. It was never about that. It was able to be comfortable, you know. And they talked about how people that came to them and said, look, now I found out that it is comfortable that I'm a black person that likes anime or comics, video games. So I really enjoyed that. And they even said, like, they love crime time as people. But why go with the stereotype that black people steal things? And for the record, crime time is said it was them who created the gimmick. And they just decided to go in a different direction. So I really enjoyed that. Um, one of the things I enjoyed on their show, they talked about different names and they supposed to reveal those like some of the names uh but they talked about how they wanted them to be preachers and um they even talked about the king of the ring and kofi kingston said you know he was in the running but realized it wouldn't have been a good idea you know why not king kofi kingston 
KKK. And I fell out laughing. I was like, wow. Yeah. Glad they didn't do that. So, you know, um, but get back to Graves podcast. One of the things he talked about was title belts, or I guess I should say titles or championships. Cause a belt is something that holds up your pants. Well, guess what? To me, this will always be a belt. I will always call it a belt. Yes, it's a title and it's a championship, but it's a belt. It's all those, all of the above, man. But um, one of the things he discussed was the Fiend's new championship, the customized championship. He said he wasn't a fan of it. Wasn't a fan of the Smoking Skull belt. So I'm listening to this on the way to dropping my daughter off, and I'm thinking, he, he made a mention about that. And I know I've heard people say yay and nay. But then he brought up the customized straps. Remember when the Ultimate Warrior won the Intercontinental Championship and the strap was yellow? And instead of them being um, black, you know? No, it's not an episode. I'm just showing off my titles. But, uh, you know, it was this particular title right here, the one they just changed. Um... Which, eh, I got, it's got to grow on me. I don't know if I'm going to add that to this collection anytime soon. I'll just leave this right here. <laughs> but um, it's got to grow on me. But he brought that up. And I started thinking, what if Stone Cold Steve Austin, instead of changing the championship, would have had a smoking skull leather? Or what if the rock would have had like some type of brahma bull type leather how cool would that have been um then you look at like bray wyatt but i i'm not a fan of this title too much but i look at it like you know i really enjoy the customized plates i thought like that's that's what customized championships should look like for the men and, you know, for the men and the women, but I really like what Naomi did by just simply making the belt glow. So that intrigued me. So I want to know, what do you guys think? How do you feel? Do you like custom championships? Do you prefer to stick with tradition and get the old school championships? Did you, did, are you a fan of the nameplates? Should all titles have nameplates or do you, or would you rather see the side plates? So folks, let me know. What do you think about that? Make sure you tweet me at Brian H. Waters. Tweet me at Wrestling Realm. This past Monday night on Raw, Lana and Lashley were arrested. Now, Rusev has had a restraining order, but apparently the restraining order didn't work out with this. You know, I think it didn't count for this jurisdiction. And after basically resisting and you know attacking the officials or those people both of them found themselves arrested now they have been since released but um i hope i really 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 hope this is a one and done at tlc i don't need to see this feud carry on i, th I like how it's been building and building let it can this just be one of those feuds that have a one time only now we know lana and rusev are married in real life we know lashley has a family so you know but just keep them away from each other who knows so but yeah seth rollins man seth rollins decided to issue an apology on monday night raw and Kevin Owens isn't buying it. This would lead to um, AOP coming out. And when AOP came out there, Seth Rollins left Owens on his own, which would lead to an attack. And it has to make you wonder, when you look at all of this, why don't Seth just turn heel? Just go full-fledged heel now. But maybe there's a slow build. He went on WWE backstage. He uh, admitted that he's moving on from CM Punk. Cause punk wasn't there and you know, he said he tried, it's not working. That's it. And he tried to defend his position and talk about being the heel, being the guy that, I mean, being the, the good guy that people like, but they boo. And he was 
just goes on. Like last year around this time, everybody was loving me, but this year, you know, I got people booing me. And a lot of times when he does this, it feels like he's just crying. He'll he'll go out there and say it doesn't matter to him, but I really think it does. I really don't think Seth Rollins like you booing him, folks. He I might be wrong, but I just don't. I don't think he likes you booing him. He's sick of it. He wants everybody to accept him. But when you went at Will Osprey, that just wasn't right. And I think that right there, because we saw the side of Seth Rollins that's I'm about the money. I'm doing my thing. Screw you. You know, and, and being that extra company guy. And let's face it, nobody being the company guy was ever cheered. When was Stone Cold Steve Austin a company guy? When was The Rock a company guy? Never when they were on screen. And, and you know, granted, there wasn't a social media back then. Because things probably would have been different. Um, you think about what The Rock and... Goldberg may have exchanged on social media. What about Austin and Goldberg? I've talked about that before in one of these previous 97 episodes, but it's the big thing. So I think that's what's hurting Seth Rollins because he doesn't know when to stop on social media. So who knows? Let's move on. Let's talk some AEW, man. Cody Rhodes is practically begging Joey Janela. I'm sorry. I said Joey Janela. MJF to get in the ring with him. He's offered him a watch. He's offered him all types of gifts and even cold hard cash. And he brought up the fact that people were against signing um, MJF. And, you know, I actually like when they introduce like cold hard cash into wrestling. I just think it's really cool. I know some people may not, but I, I think it's really cool when they introduce the money and say, okay, well, you get X amount of thousands of dollars if you beat this person or we put a bounty on somebody. When they did with Stone Cold Steve Austin, it was $100,000 out of Shane McMahon's trust fund. And if you got that, you would be, if you eliminated Stone Cold Steve Austin, you would get that money. So you had good guys and bad guys going after. So I don't hate it. So I want to see where this is going. Obviously, I think this is going to be a long build. I think this goes past their next event. And then we'll see when we will get an actual match between Cody and MJF. And again, I could be wrong. But, um, you know, he talked about his wife. And I'll get into her talking more about Brandy Rose later. He talked about her and how she's doing this thing and she's cutting people's hair. His brother and the Young Bucks have found themselves in a few with the inner circle. And, you know, so I like how they don't have to always be up under each other and kind of do their separate thing. But you obviously know Cody and Brandy are married. Chris Jericho is one of the most innovative superstars in the history of the professional wrestling business. You look at him years ago, I believe it was 1997-98, he had a list of a thousand holes. Um, and he went to, because, you know, D. Malenko was known as the man of a thousand holes. So then Jericho says, well, I have a list of a thousand holes myself. I think that's how I went. And somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe my memory serves me correctly. That's how I went. And he pulled out this list and he talked about Armbar, Lion Tamer, all these crazy, you know, every name. And then they, I remember Armbar kept coming up. That would evolve later to the list of Jericho. And whenever you would do something crazy or you would say something off color, you just made the list. And it was something that people were going around saying. People were saying it in group chats. You know, your friends act crazy. You say, you know what? You just made the list. Well, now he has the list, the lexicon of Le Champion. And what that is, a list of superstars that he's not going to wrestle or defend his championship against in 2019. Now, we know this is December beginning of December, but nonetheless, it's what, three more weeks of television. 
And I just thought this was super cool. What it led to, though, was them setting up a match with him and Jungle Boy for the AEW Championship. And I believe that is on um, December the 18th. I could be wrong. I don't have my calendar up. Um, but we'll see. Um, obviously, I don't see Jericho losing the championship. He's defending the title against John Moxley. Eventually, that's the number one contender. Somebody let me know if you know the name of the event, if they named the pay-per-view or, you know, because as far as I know, they haven't. But like I said, I could be wrong. So, but I'm going to go ahead and take my first break. Make sure you are subscribed to the Wrestling Realm. If not, let me show you how you get there. Yes, there's only one person who can keep up. And that's the realness himself. So you know, and you see the BHW, and then you see the TRDA, it's game time, baby. But well, it's not gonna be that simple, no. It'll be a lot of naysayers, a lot of people want to. And I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. So that was myself, the real Dwayne Allen. Make sure you subscribe to the show. Drop a five-star rating. Go on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Turn the bell notification on. That way, you never miss a beat. Want to talk Mia Yim. Mia Yim returned to television this past week on WWE NXT. Or I should just say NXT, but they used the hashtag WWE NXT. Um, you know, word... To the wise, never call a black woman a hood rat if you don't want those hands. I married the one, folks. I know these things. Mind you, I have three sisters that are black women. Mia Yim, if you did not know, is a black woman. You do not call a black woman a hood rat. And that's what Dakota Kai did. She was getting ready for a match with Rhea Ripley, and she said she was going to you know, take her down just like she did that hood rap Mia Yim. Well, Rhea Ripley was one step ahead of the game. She said, look, you know, you wanted to set us up for failure? Well, I got to set up for you. And boom, here comes Mia Yim. Guns blazing in Tim's. Now, black woman come at you in Tim's because they expensive. Right, she right, and after you done called her a hood right, oh, she ready to fight, and she ready to stomp a mud hole, and yeah, you know what. I like this. I want to see this feud. I know Tegan Knox, the whole deal there. We can wait for that, but plus she's injured anyway. We need Mia Yim and Dakota Kai, because it's Dakota Kai's fault that Mia Yim, after all that hard work, being punished with a ladder, falling, breaking, you know, getting hurt, and then going to SmackDown while she's not 100%, to all that, for her not to be a takeover and possibly not at Survivor Series, it's Dakota Kai's fault. So I need to see this matchup. Um, speaking of Rhea Ripley, Shayna Baszler, who was victorious over Zia Lee earlier in the night, would, you know, confront her, but she would come out with her goons. And you know what that means. It was too much. It was too much for Rhea Ripley. Love where this is going. Um, this could be the match, the, you know, the powerhouse match of the year between two ladies. It's not going to be your technically sound, but this is going to get real personal. And I can't wait. Um, this will take place in, I believe, two weeks. for the, Yeah, two weeks for the NXT Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley has already been the NXT UK Women's Champion. Now she's ready for the NXT Women's Championship. And I believe Shayna Baszler's championship is in trouble unless she has help. But I guarantee you, folks, that if she has help here, there's going to be another match. And that next match, you know what the stipulation is going to be. Keith Lee. Yes, the fans, you love him. You're basking in his glory. Yes, people love Keith Lee and keep the momentum going. That's all I'm saying. You know, I said that before and I like it. Keith Lee, um, Tomasa Ciampa, 
and Finn Balor will battle next week to see who will be the number one contender for Adam Cole's NXT Championship. I got to go with Ciampa, though. I just don't see... I, I, I know Lee's kind of getting hot right now, but he's not there. I think we get Ciampa, and we're going to get Ciampa Cole, and he perhaps may get the championship back. I think there's bigger plans for Keith Lee. I think right now we're in that testing phase. If you remember, he's kind of in that phase where I want to say where the rock was in the beginning but then again he won the championship after a swerve so he may not be the best comparison but maybe chris jericho when jericho was in that mid-card life and it looked like they teased us around 99 what was that no 2000 early but then in 2001 he was red hot so I could be wrong, but I just think right now it's just to kind of see how this momentum's going, and then we're going to see can Keith Lee hold the run with the ball. Now, we know Roman done put him over. We know Triple H done put him over. So he's got some, you know, clout, but I want to see what happens. Now, here's another guy I want to see, Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne is somebody that I believe is a star. Pete Dunne can main event three to five WrestleManias. But I don't know what they're doing with him right now. Now, I guess he's putting over Killian Dane. And maybe he'll go to Raw or SmackDown. I don't need him to go there just yet. I just Because I don't think there's room for him. Yes, he's the bruiser weight. But I don't know. I just don't think there's room for him. Would have loved to see him take the title from Adam Cole. But I understand why they didn't do it. So I want to know what's next, though. So um, I do, you know, be, like I say, he lost to Killian Dane. What's going to happen? But I believe this man, you know, you can keep him as a baby face. He's got that baby face appeal that's like we like him because we respect him and he works hard. But he's not necessarily a rah rah crowd guy. Kind of like Stone Cold Steve Austin was. Now, I'm not saying by any means he's Stone Cold, but kind of like that guy you got behind. But Austin's like, look, I'm doing what I do. Yeah, y'all cheering. That's cool. That's what Pete Dunn reminds me of. And that said, I was going to mention Brandy Rhodes. And Brandy Rhodes and Karma came down, and they tried to get Chris Statlander to join their new stable which is called nightmare um shoot what is it called i had the name and just like that um i got i, mean, I just want to make sure i got this right um oh boy <laughs> yeah um no it's not midnight society that's nightmare collective that's the name yeah, so she wanted Chris Statlander to join Nightmare Collective. But she didn't. And instead, because there was a fan who jumped out and said, no, let me be a part of it. And if this did not remind me of CM Punk and when um, Serena Dweeb sacrificed and cut her hair. But I'm going to give it time. But right now, I'm just like, what are y'all doing? And then we saw Bray Wyatt cut Daniel Bryan's hair. I don't need to see all this jibber jabbers back and forth. I don't know. We had a new 24-7 champion once again. This time it was a celebrity. It was a championship NASCAR driver. Kyle Busch would become the NXT the WWE 24-7 champion after he defeated R-Truth. And I think that was Michael Waltrip who actually helped him because he had a referee shirt on. Um, now, of course, Truth would get it back. But, you know, it's, that's what the title's for. It's comedy. And what better person to do it than R-Truth, especially when he calls it, what's going on, Mr. 28, 45, 7, and all those other names. 
Moving on, Randy Orton, man. <laughs> Randy Orton, as he has beef with the OC. Now we've seen Randy Orton, and AJ Styles before, um, and it was it was it was solid, you know. Um, but we're getting it. It looks like we may be getting it again. I don't see Orton becoming the United States Champion, but I mean, matter of fact, just give us Orton Lesnar again. Let's try that. Orton's a baby face. Let's let's let Orton redeem himself. See if he can go without getting knocked out and bloodied up really bad. But, uh, yeah, after the OC beat the superheroes, they had a celebration, but Orton said, uh-uh. So, but, you know, like I said, AJ Styles, man, he's he's that dude. Um, no matter where you put him. But here's another one. Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson and the real Dwayne Allen constantly reminds me he's a mic guy. When he talks, you're entertained. You listen. And I want to see him more. I don't know if you're going to put him in a singles battle. I, I don't need that because I like these guys all together. But I just want to see him do more funny stuff. Give him the microphone every week. Him and Sami Zayn are those people that you don't need them to hold the championship. And I'm laughing because I don't like using that phrase. Um, but you don't need them to hold it in order for you to want to watch them. Because you just wait to see because you know they're going to say something funny. So that's where I am with um, Sami Zayn and Carl Anderson. Now I'm going to round the show off and end it, you know, get ready to come to a close. But I got to talk about this. Joey Janela. To me, no business being in the ring with John Moxley. Last week, he gets out there on Twitter and complains about how he was eliminated. And... His whole, the way he's being used. And then this week, he's in the main event. I guess if complaining gets you there. But here's the thing. I look at Joey Janela, and I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with his look. I'm I'm not really impressed with his moves. You name me a great Joey Janela match. And I'm going to tell you what I saw was a spot fest of somebody jumping through stuff. Uh, just throwing their body around. And, you know, I watched him and Leo Rush beat the mess out of each other at CZW where Joey Janela dropped from the ceiling through a table. And I remember sitting there I'm like, dude, that's just ridiculous. Ain't no way, no how, as Uncle Rob Parker would say. But I'm just like, man, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't see it. Jim Ross, uh, he's going to be a star. I do not see star when it comes to Joey Janela. I could be wrong. I just don't see it. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it this week. Make sure you're subscribed to the Wrestling Realm. Just simply go on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Follow me, follow The Real Dwayne Allen on Twitter, at Brian H. Waters, at Dwayne Allen 24. Make sure you're following The Wrestling Realm, at Wrestling Realm. Got to give a shout out to Wells Mania. You know, uh, new subscriber to, uh, what was the other one? I think it was, I don't want to say it might have been two broken girls. There's an another new subscriber to the wrestling realm networks. They, they subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast. So, um, well, make sure we mute that. The two girls on a bench. I'm sorry, I said two broke girls. Yeah, two girls on a bench. Also, Megan O'Brien. So, you know, I got to give shout outs with shout outs to do, you know, getting new fans, new subscribers. Come on to the party. Go in the wrestling room. There's a lot of content you'll see there that you'll enjoy. I promise you. But that's going to wrap things up. Until the next time, folks, I'm Brian H. Waters. So long, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Break It Down with Brian H. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you get notified every time the Wrestling Realm posts new content.